Hello and welcome. We are starting a new playthrough today of a game that you guys helped me select and that is called Lionheart Legacy of the Crusader. This is a game by Black Isle uh, who's done a lot of good RPGs in the past and we are going to have fun exploring this fairly epic storyline at least for the first half of the game. Uh, after a while it will drop down and not be quite as exciting but I hope you guys will still enjoy watching this playthrough. The game is a little different right from the bat as when you start out you have to create your character and then it shows you the intro video which is a little different but not a big deal. You can pick from some already pre-generated characters but as usual I like to create my own there are four distinct races in this game human, demon kin, feral kin, and sylvan. You will learn a little bit about what all of those mean after the intro video and the first little bit of the game. I'm going to be going through as a sylvan. Which race you pick determines the maximum and minimum of each attribute and I'm going to go down and show you what each one of these does although you can probably figure out what most of them are going to do strength determines your ability to fight hand to hand and how much stuff you can carry perception how much you notice things around you it has a very large impact on your mana pool as well so that's kind of important endurance determines your hit points and your resistance to poison and disease again another important trait Charisma, how well you interact with NPCs, salesmen, and also has a minor impact on your mana pool as well. Intelligence determines how many skill points you get per level. It's one of the most important stats in the game, as skill points are going to determine how effectively we can actually fight. Agility is going to affect range damage and how quickly you attack and cast spells, that kind of thing. And then luck is going to affect your various resistances to fire and cold damage, etc. As well as how often you can critically hit. You start off with a basic setup. You have five points to spend. I'm going to adjust some of these. Let's see, I want to do about six there. About six there. And drop you down to five. Intelligence is eight, seven, and six. That sounds about right. That'll do us fairly well. For some reason in this game, I always prefer to play as a female. It doesn't make a difference in the storyline one way or the other. But overall, I don't know what it is about this game, but it's just more aesthetically accurate, I guess, fighting through as a female. And you can select a different head types. You got the big green head and the blue head with the little spikes. Uh, I prefer this one where my face is full of lava. It, uh, it'll work for me. And then you can adjust the color of her shirt as well. Let's do... what are we going to do? Let's do like orange. There you go. That's good enough. And we'll call you Dalvina. You're not quite a doll in character, but you're pretty close. You can also select a racial trait for anything except for humans. Obviously, they don't have one. And this will give you bonuses to some attributes and then penalties to some attributes, depending on which one you go with and how good of a bonus it gives you. I'm going to go through and I'm going to pick Wind Ancestry. This is going to give me one extra agility and bonus to my armor but it's going to reduce my strength and I can't carry quite as much stuff in addition to the loss of strength but it'll all work out well enough for me let's get out of the main screen and go to the secondary option there are two generic traits that you can pick and again there's a list bonuses negatives to each one the first one I'm going to pick is going to be gifted this is going to give me the ability to add one to all of my stats in exchange for fewer skill points per level. 
which is a good trade-off in my opinion and skill, uh, stat points are very hard to raise up throughout the course of the game and they are a hard cap so you can't go above the the 10 for any specific category let's also pick ascetic what this is going to do is give us 10 bonus skill points right off the bat but we're going to find 10% wealth over the course of the game. That sounds like a lot, except for the fact that out of the wealth that you get in the game, most of it is going to come from selling items rather than just gold you find. So it's not going to bother me that much, especially since we're only going to find gold 10 or 20 a pop, so that's only going to reduce it by one or two. There are also three spirits you can choose from. Elemental spirit is the spirit of good, more or less. A bestial spirit is the spirit of nature, it's neutral. And then the demonic spirit is the spirit of evil. Not really evil, but you know what I'm saying. Anyways, we're going to be picking the bestial spirit. I find him interesting. The other ones are all pretty good. And he'll give me a slight bonus to the spell class that I'm going to be checking. And then you can pick three skills to tag. These will level up twice as fast as any of the other non-tagged skills, and there's quite a few of them. We're going to be picking ranged weapons, as it is definitely the easiest one as far as killing people and staying out of the way of some of the truly nasty enemies you can get. We're also going to pick necromancy, as it is not one that is used a lot in any of the videos or playthroughs that I, I've done before and it might might prove to be pretty interesting summoning your own bad guys to come fight for you and we'll also pick protective out of the tribal magic branch as well in order to help keep us alive so that was basically the character creation we're gonna go ahead and start it and watch the intro video In 1192, the Knights of the West waged the Third Crusade against the armies of the East. King Richard the Lionhearted defeated his rival, the great Sultan Saladin, and captured the city of Acre. When Saladin failed to pay a ransom demanded by the Crusaders, Richard heeded the counsel of one of his trusted advisors and had 3,000 prisoners put to death. But this traitorous advisor had tricked Richard into completing an ancient ritual, the disjunction, a catastrophe that caused demons, monsters, and spirits to spill across the land like a black tide. Faced with this grave threat, Richard and Saladin joined forces and fought side by side to save humanity, fearlessly engaging the creatures and driving them back, at last sealing the rift caused by the disjunction. Although Lionheart and Saladin were victorious, magic and terrible creatures had escaped into the world, changing the lands forever. Centuries passed, and humanity struggled to deal with the many changes wrought by the disjunction. Magic mingled with the bloodlines of humankind. Spirits joined with people, granting magical power to some and bringing misery to others. Many cities were raised in countless conflicts against the evil forces that escaped during the Cataclysm. Brave crusaders honored the legacy of Lionheart and fought this evil across Europe and Asia. The Knights Templar of the West and the Order of Saladin in the East waged war against the forces of darkness, while the Inquisition sought to rebuild civilization and purge all those possessed with diabolic magic. Today, in 1588, these valiant orders have brought a degree of security and peace to a chaotic world. But I am haunted by a disturbing vision. Dark schemes threaten to break a fragile peace. While the betrayer seeks an age once lost, a new war will be waged in the West and East, its outcome hanging on a coin just tossed. But before the spinning coin can land, 
it will be caught by the slaver's hand.